All right. Hello again, adventurers, and welcome to another exciting episode of d d Did a Deep Dive, the show where we dive did a deep into cookie classes, this is subclasses, and other FIFA features of 5th edition did a Dungeons & Dragons to help you get the most out of your choo choices. So, today, it is an end... It is the end of an era. The final video, at least for a little bit, that I'll be making covering the 5th edition D&D Cross Final Fantasy XIV Classes and Races Compendium. Oh my lord, was this uh, an adventure, let's just say. Um, when I first dove into this six months ago or something like that, um, I didn't realize how much... Uh, of a commitment this is going to be. Um, I'm not sad that I did it. I have, I have, I have learned a lot over this process, uh, but I will be very, very careful about doing something like the, the, this again. Um, this many classes and subclasses is mind-bogglingly uh, uh, overwhelming. That being said, uh, today we're going to cover uh, the three subclasses of uh, the Samurai. Now, uh, as I mentioned uh, b -b -b before, creatively, I am tapped out. I do not have the ability to make uh, really any suggestions or, or, or ideas about how to uh, make uh, these work a little bit b -b -b better. Um, so unfortunately, I'm just going to be commenting on what I see here. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of it is going to be negative. Uh, the summary class as written uh, simply does not work. Uh, the defining feature, which quick refresher on 5th edition kick a class design. Um, in 5th edition, every class is designed to play very, very did it differently. In order to do that, um, they all have uh, these things that we call defining features. A uh, defining feature is, this is something that is either unique to the class or maybe not unique, but it's something that the class gets earlier than other cricket classes or they can use in a different way than other cricket classes. Uh, in order for something to be a defining feature, it needs to show up within the first two levels. So the defining feature, the, the main one for the samurai is this thing called Sen, which is just broken. Basically, you use a bonus action to gain a charge of Sen. And then you can use the Sen to do other things. Unfortunately, the other things that you can do with the Sen... Um, are never worth the fact that you have to spend a bonus action plus another action in order to, to, to do it. Sen fights against action economy. Um, and so it means that any, uh, any team with uh, a samurai on the team is going to be at a disadvantage uh, because the big balancing factor in combat and kick encounters for 5th edition is which side has more actions that they can make. That's why uh, as monsters get more powerful, they start getting multi-attack and the, the things like that because they need additional actions to be able to keep up with uh, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the player characters. And that's what keeps things balanced. And this forces you to sacrifice a bonus action and get nothing for it. Um, and then later on, you also have to use another action uh, in order to do something. And so they just don't work. The other thing about Sen that I really don't like is the way that you gain Sen charges isn't linear or anything like that effectively. Uh, the first time you use it, you get one charge, but then every time after that, you double the number of charges you already have and then add another one to, the, to it. It's overly complicated. And the vast majority of uh, abilities that you send for the samurai only use one. Um, in the base class, there are only two things that you can ever use more than one send charge on. Neither of them are worth using a single send charge on, much less multiple. Um, and uh, I was slightly wrong. There are things that require multiple send charges in a couple of the, 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 the subclasses, but they still aren't worth burning multiple ch ch charges on so my original critique of it it is the 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 weird complex nature that you uh gain it and the fact that it's just a badly designed uh uh feature means that uh they're not going to be useful so that being said uh let's jump into uh the the the, the uh classes themselves 
or the subclass of themselves. Starting with Aijatsu style. Now, um, Aijatsu is not a word. Um, Aijutsu uh, is a word. And I actually went and looked it up because I, I know the word. Uh, Aijutsu is actually um, a, uh, uh, a weapons technique taught uh, to people that uh, use uh, the Japanese katana. And uh, Aijutsu uh, yeah, specifically refers to the ability to draw your katana and strike with it uh, in one very, very quick uh, movement. Uh, so that's what Aijutsu, uh, Aijutsu is. Um, Aijutsu, where they have an A instead of the U, I think that's a typo, uh, and it needs to be uh, f -f fixed because I I've never seen that particular spelling of it anywhere. Um, but I uh, uh, I uh, uh, I jutsu uh, eventually uh, I don't know if it's part of or uh, uh, it eventually inspired um, uh, uh, I I um, I Aido, uh, I believe uh, is how it's pronounced, uh, which is actually a Japanese martial art uh, that is. Uh, uh, developed entirely around the katana and being uh, extremely aware of your surroundings so that you can draw an attack very, very quickly. quickly. Um, so, yes, that's the, the, the first thing is you spelt the word wrong. Going past that, um, at third level, you get NP. As an action, you may spend one sen charge to make a ranged weapon attack with a range of 30 feet using Blades of Wind. Make this attack and damage roll as though you are making a melee weapon attack. Attacks made in this way deal thunder to the damage. Begin at 5th level, you may make two ranged melee weapon att attacks when you use NP. So, uh... Probably the biggest thing wrong with this, it's, it's nice that it, it does work with extra attacks. So, you're not always putting yourself in a bad position by doing this because it takes an action to do this and as soon as you hit fifth, fifth level uh, an action means two attacks that you have to waste to do this however you also have to waste a bonus action so NP costs a bonus action plus an action just to do a ranged attack um, here's a, a better thought um, use a ranged weapon uh, now the the the, uh, the samurai uh, uh, is a mad class. Uh, mad meaning multi attribute dependent class. However, because of the just strange amounts of of, of things in here, not only does uh, the 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 the, the um, uh, samurai need to have a good strength score because that's what they use for all their attacks. They also need a good wisdom score because that's what they use for uh, any saving throws because of their send things. They also need a good uh, charisma. Uh, score uh, because a few of their abilities are, are built around uh, charisma as well. So they're, they actually need three different uh, they actually need three d -d 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 different uh, attributes which is rough. And then if they wanted evasion to be useful they also needed to have a decent dexterity score. So of the six ability scores you had, four of them have to be pretty high in order to take advantage of the kick class which doesn't happen you you un, unless you roll super super well you're never going to have four different attributes that are high um that being said when talking about np um like i said you 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 could waste a bonus action to make a ranged attack or you could just make a ranged attack with a ranged weapon uh, which being a strength-based class, there's a lot of throwing weapons that would work. Or here's another one. You could just move 30 feet and make the attack because you can move that much. There aren't a ton of situations where a purely melee, me melee character is going to be completely without actions um, because the only enemy uh, that you can attack is somehow impossible to get to um, with a melee weapon. There are some situations where that happens, but it tends to be relatively rare. Um, and in those instances, most melee characters will carry at least one range weapon, so they can still do something. Um, if they were to use a ranged weapon, they wouldn't, they wouldn't need NP at all. And here's the other thing, because you already need a wisdom score, if you were to take a single feat that gives you access to a cleric or druid 
cantrip. Either of those ranged cantrips are going to have a much longer range than the 30 feet. Heck, most throwing weapons have a longer range uh, than 30 feet. Um, and it's going to do more damage. Uh, and since you already need a wisdom score for this class to work, all of that makes NP completely worthless. Um, again, having to sacrifice your bonus action in order to uh, be able to use your action to do something just will never, ever be a good thing to do. There are much better th the things you can do with your bonus action than wasting it just to get a limited river resource. Uh, moving forward, at 6th level, you get Body of Steel. You can add half your proficiency bonus rounded up to any strength, dexterity, or constitution check you make that doesn't already use your proficiency bonus. In addition, when you make a running long jump, the distance you can cover increases by number of feet equal to your strength modifier. So, this doesn't make a ton of sense. The actual little blurb for uh, Aijatsu style is you have trained in the traditional Aijatsu style of swords play. You are trained in delivering deadly blows with great power and precision. None of that makes any sense for B -B Body of Steel. Um, nor does giving them... Um, effectively, Body of Steel is kind of like uh, uh, a, um, a knockoff bard ability. Because bards get the ability to add half their proficiency bonus to a lot of different checks. Um, this is effectively that. Um, the other thing about this is there are no constitution checks. Uh, there are constitution saving throws, but there are no skills that use constitution, and therefore there are no constitution checks. So I don't know if the intention was to include uh, saving throws in uh, the, 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 this. Uh, generally, uh, saving throws are c c considered uh, a separate thing. They, they're not considered a strength check or a dexterity check. They're a saving throw. They're a separate the, the thing. Um, so when... Uh, you factor that the, that in uh, the constitution aspect is completely pointless, uh, and um, they already have uh, proficiency in strength and wisdom saves. Uh, so really, the only the only huge benefit, you know, you, you uh, athletics checks are the only strength checks that exist. So you could add half your proficiency bonus if you're not already trained in athletics, which you probably are because, again, strength is one of your main, uh, is, is your biggest ability score. You're probably going to choose at least one skill that uses your best abilities as a score. So it's kind of useless for that. For dexterity, you have acrobatics, um, uh, sleight of hand, and stealth which is nice, but again, because you need all these other things, you're probably already not going to have a great dexterity score for this. Um, so that's interesting. And then, like I said, there are no, there's no such thing as a constitution to check in 5th edition. Just constitution to saving throws. Um, so yeah, overall, uh, at, the ability doesn't make sense. Most of the uh, aspects of it are... are for the most part, useless. Um, and then the running long jump thing, I, I don't understand where that comes from. Moving on to 10th level, you get Tenka Gokan. As an action, you may spend two Sen to deliver a series of attacks with incredible speed and focus. You take a melee weapon attack against all creatures in a 15-foot cone in front of you. So, this is a worse version of burning hands effectively burning hands you get to roll 3d8 damage uh and it's guaranteed damage you can't miss with burning hands this uh you get to make an attack against every character that's in a 15 foot cone or every creature in a 15 foot cone you can miss all of them and if you hit the most you will ever do is a d10 plus your strength mod so everything about Tenka Gugugoken is just bad. Now, again, this does take two sen instead of one, but even for one sen, it's not worth it. And that means Tenka uh, Gugugoken doesn't just cost an action. It costs two bonus actions and an action.
to perform uh, a severely worse version of uh, uh, Blazing uh, Blazing Hands, I think. Wow. My brain has just... It's gone. Absolutely, just completely g -g 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 gone. Uh... I'm just I'm gonna look this up because it's gonna drive me nuts that I can't think of what, what, what it is it is a, a wizard spell isn't it I did warlock I didn't want warlock I wondered what a wizard I was trying to figure out why I couldn't find this spell that I know exists Burning hands. There we go. Burning hands. So that's what it is. It's it's just it's pointless. And again, you're still going to. I mean, it's nice that you theoretically can make three or four. Theoretically, with a 15 foot cone, you can make a maximum of six attacks if you could get six characters to line up perfectly in a 15 foot cone. You're never going to get that though. At most, you'll ever get is three. So theoretically, you can spend two bonus actions plus your action to make three attacks, or you could just spend two actions, because it's going to take you two turns to do this. You could spend two actions to m -m make, uh, at 10th level, four attacks against anyone in any order you want, even repeating attacks against this, this is the same enemy, and then still have your bonus actions to do whatever you want with. So again, it's just not worth the investment. Finally, at 14th level, you get Hisatsu Kaiten. As a bonus action, you may spend one send charge. Until the start of your next turn, add wisdom modifier to all weapon damage rolls you make. So, this is another one that technically requires two bonus actions. Because it takes a bonus action uh, from the turn before. And then on the next turn, you have to use your bonus action again to do this. And at most, at your absolute best, you are adding 10 damage. So for two bonus actions, you are adding 10 damage. And that's if you have a 20 Wisdom. Now, again, Wisdom is your secondary uh, ability score. So it's possible you may never max out your uh, whoa, 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 Wisdom. Just because there's not a ton of saving throws that you make uh, using Sen. So, uh, yeah, you may decide to, to, to take a feat or... Use it to increase your charisma or use it to increase your dexterity. Like, you have so many different things. So, for two bonus actions, you get to add a little bit of extra damage. It doesn't increase on a cookie crit. Or, you could not you, you could use a heavy weapon instead of the longsword you're probably using. Uh, and get plus 10 damage simply from Great Weapon Master. And you would get that on every attack, not having to burn two bonus actions to, 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 to do that. Um, and again, there's a very, very good chance you're never going to get that high because you would have to max out your Wisdom modifier in order to, to do that. And there's too many other uh, ability scores that you need high for this class to work. So you're more likely than not, you're going to only add six damage if both attacks hit. Maybe eight damage. Um, so yeah, overall, the Aijatsu style is just bad. Like, there, is, there isn't a good aspect in here or something like that. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, the only kind of not horrible thing is Body of Steel, and the best thing I can say about that um, is it doesn't make sense here. I don't know why it's added here, but most of it is redundant. Um, so yeah. Moving to the Blade Master. At third level, you get. Uh, I think this might be Chitin uh, or Chitin. I'm not sure. C H I T E N. Uh, when a creature makes a melee weapon attack against you, you may use your reaction to make an attack of opportunity against the creature. This. Doesn't use Sen, so automatically this is massively better than anything else uh, in the class. And uh, this is actually a little bit broken for a third level cookie character. Um, there are uh, uh, there are actually quite a few different uh, subclass abilities uh, that give you the ability to make 
um, uh, opportunity attacks if they attack or miss you. They all show up in tier three minimum. Uh, there might be one that shows up in tier two that I'm not thinking of, but the the, the, the first one that came to mind, again, because I'm a monk player, uh, is monks get the ability to do that, I think, at level 15. So giving uh, a... Uh, Again, uh, at low levels, you really don't have a lot of things that you use your reaction for. So giving a third level character effectively a guaranteed use of uh, the, the, their reaction, because you're almost always going to be have people who making uh, melee, uh, melee attacks against you. Now, it does clarify melee weapon attack. Um, so theoretically, uh, this wouldn't work against creatures that use natural weapons. Uh, because those don't count as weapons. Like if they use claws or anything, that's not a melee weapon attack. That's a claw attack. Um, so theoretically, I'm not sure if that's meant to be a balancing uh, aspect. Despite the fact that I think this is this is broken for how low a level, um, I'm not a fan of it only working on weapon attacks because it's just it requires too much thought to use it, and then it's not fun. But I would much rather see this show up at level 10... Uh, minimum because at, at third level this unbalances the game it gives it gives the class a ton of extra actions that it normally wouldn't have access to and would unbalance combat really really qu quickly moving forward at sixth level you get nothing ventured uh your defensive fighting style and cool head have helped you to learn how to best discern the location of traps you have advantage while making wisdom, perception, and intelligence investigation checks while looking for traps and hidden passages. This is another thing that doesn't make sense. The Blade Master's d uh, meant to be the defensive one. Um, I, I don't know why being a defensive fighter would make you any better at locating traps. Uh, because in general, locating traps uh, relies a lot more on understanding how the trap works and noticing what could trigger a trap. Because uh, a, a well-placed uh, trap you will never see. What you will see is the indication of how it could be triggered. Um, and in order for you to notice that, you need to understand how the trap works. None of those are part of combat. Um, I am uh, f f familiar with... Uh, I guess you could call it defensive combat. There are... Um, not entire martial arts, but there are uh, aspects of, of uh, uh, martial arts that are designed to be more defensive in nature. They're designed to be a little bit more reactionary in nature. Um, <clears throat> quite a few, uh, um, uh, quite a few grappling uh, styles and, and grappling aspects of martial arts tend to focus a lot more on defense and reacting to an opponent than uh, to actively attacking an opponent. Um, none of that, like, uh, um, when I took Taekwondo, we actually had two different versions of reactive, uh, uh, combat that we learned. One was called Ocean Soul, uh, which was, uh, grab defenses. They would grab you and you would learn how to react to a grab. None of them were really great, uh, because the way that you train them, uh, is not in a combat-like situation. Um, and after I started learning Aikido, I learned one of the biggest flaws of Aikido is uh, when you practice and when you train Aikido, you do not do it in a combat situation. Um, and so if you ever attempt to use Aikido in a, a, a situation where you would need to use it, you're simply just not prepared to use it in that way. Your muscle memory isn't created um, when you're training it. Um, unlike most other martial arts, when you're you're learning it, you're learning it so that you can use it in a combat situation. And sparring is a huge part of most martial arts because it gives you actual combat um, training and the things like that. But even when you're just learning the kicks, you're learning them as if you are kicking a target. Uh, in Ocean Soul, you didn't. You would have someone come up and they would grab your wrist, and then you'd do this technique. But it was all like boom. Like the, the technique didn't start until well after the grab had happened. And so it, it wasn't great training, but it's still, I, I've never used my ocean soul, but it is, uh, uh, in the idea of this blade master where they're reactive, that, that is a reactive style of uh, d -d 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 defense. 
on a reactive style of martial arts. Um, none of that would make me any better at spotting hidden passages, nor would it make me uh, any better at spotting traps. Uh, when you learn to defend yourself against attackers, when you learn to be reactive to your uh, 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 to an aggressor, uh, you learn how to read people, not traps. So nothing about nothing ventured makes sense to me, other than they needed something at sixth level to give them. So like, let's give them advantage on stuff. Um, <clears throat> that being said, it's actually kind of useful. Um, uh, however, your intelligence is going to be uh, one of your low ball abilities. So it's not going to be that useful because you're probably going to have a negative score in intelligence because you need four other uh, attributes to be high. Um, wisdom should be pretty good, but you don't use wisdom perception to find traps. Uh, you use intelligence investigation to find traps. You use wisdom perception, I guess, to find hidden passages and things like that. Um, but yeah, n nothing about nothing ventured is useful in any way, shape, or form for this samurai because their intelligence score is going to be butt kiss uh, and... Uh, they're uh the only good thing is they might be slightly better at finding hidden passages which isn't that big a deal in the D, D. even if your your dm is super super thrilled with um making hidden passages and putting them in all of his dungeons and things like that there's so many other ways to find hidden passages that this is never going to be be, be, be useful going forward at 10th level you get mind's eye when a creature makes a melee weapon attack against you, as a reaction, you may spend a number of send charges to increase your armor class by one for each charge spent. You must declare you're doing this before the die result is decided. Um, first things first, that you must declare you are doing this before the die result is decided. Uh, is pointless, to be b -b blunt. Because the die res, uh, result, you you know what your armor class and you will f you know what your armor class is and you will find out what their role is before you have to make the, 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 the this uh, uh, thing. So it doesn't matter that it hasn't been quote unquote decided. You know if it hits or misses as soon as they roll it. So that's kind of pointless. That being said, um, Mind's Eye conflicts with the uh, Hisatsu uh, uh, Chitin. Uh, because now you have to choose between increasing your armor class or hitting them. Um, uh, and, uh, I, again, uh, Hisatsu Chitin uh, doesn't require Sen to use, so it's automatically going to be better than Mind's Eye, because this effectively means you have to burn uh, a bonus action plus your reaction to increase your armor class by one, which is not really worth it um uh one armor class can be a a nice thing and if you do happen to burn two three or four bro bonus actions to get it up to higher um that might be a, a really good th the thing or you could take defensive duelist and make sure you have a weapon that has the finesse property on you since you you have to use a versatile weapon actually i don't know if there's a versatile weapon with them um, i'm gonna look that up uh so i don't think there's a versatile weapon with uh uh finesse versatile quarter staff uh doesn't have f -f finesse Versal, Versal. Wow, I didn't realize that. There's not a single versatile weapon uh, that also has the finesse property. That's interesting. I guess it makes sense. Uh, but the reason I was saying that is uh, because you technically um, are supposed to use versatile weapons with this, uh, all the defensive duelist needs is a weapon with a finesse property that is held in one hand. That's it. And then you can use your reaction to add your proficiency bonus to uh, your armor class, which is significantly better than just one. Uh, at 10th level, I believe that's going to be four. Uh, so yeah, Mind's Eye is completely worthless. There are so many better ways to increase your armor class. Um with your reaction than having to burn a bonus action for just a single point.
point of armor. Finally, going to 14th level, you get the Worm Turns, which is just a creepy name. Uh, you may take two reactions in each round of combat. Uh, additionally, while you're under the effect of Third Eye, non-magical weapon damage you take is reduced by number equal to your Wisdom Ability modifier, and creatures you hit with an attack of opportunity have the remaining movement reduced by 10 feet. This is just kind of a hodgepodge of things that don't make sense. Um... You can reduce their speed for no reason. Uh, you can reduce damage, but it's not a good amount. Uh, again, the most you're going to be, 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 be able um, to uh, re reduce it by is, uh, is going to be uh, five points, which by 14th level is not going to help almost at all. Um, it only works on weapon to the damage. So again, any creature that doesn't use a weapon, it doesn't m m matter for. And all spells will be perfectly f f fine for you. Um, and uh, the two reactions thing, that, uh, that breaks uh, Axe Economy in a completely different way. You already have effectively a guaranteed reaction with Hisatsu uh, Chitin. Uh, so, so, so now you can do that twice. It it does kind of break the kaka class. And again, because it doesn't use the sense system whatsoever, it's actually useful. Um, so yeah, I'm the worm turns is just a hodgepodge of weird stuff that none of it makes sense except for the reactions, which is is cool, uh, but is not going to be that useful with uh the class itself because again a, a single additional attack or in this case two additional attacks not on your turn if somebody hits you um with a melee wo wo weapon attack is just it's never going to be enough to make up for just all the bad stuff in this class so um thus far the blade master is the closest one to actually being a viable character build uh which uh, surprisingly enough um uh, Rifle Avenger, uh, uh, who's one of the people that have uh, I've been talking about uh, with uh, the, the, this in um, uh, on the uh, uh, the uh, subreddit for it, uh, specifically mentioned. Yeah, the Blade Master is is probably the the best of the subclasses and the closest to being something that you could use, uh, mostly because most of the abilities don't rely on Sam. So, yeah, when you uh, uh, when you can improve the class uh, immensely by not using uh, its defining feature, there's something wrong. All right, finally we go to the Ronin. At third level for the Roman, you get Hasatsu Gyoten. As an action, you may spend one charge of your Sen to charge a target creature with lightning speed. Select a creature within 30 feet of you and move in a straight line towards them, stopping if you come in contact with an obstacle. This movement does not provoke opportunity, uh, uh, does not provoke attacks of opportunity. After doing so, you may make one melee weapon attack with advantage. You must travel at least to 10 feet to gain advantage on the attack. Uh, so this is, you can sacrifice a bonus action and your action, uh, which after fifth level is two attacks to move 30 feet and make a single attack with advantage. It's... If it wasn't for the fact that you have to burn your, your bonus action, plus you have to use it instead of uh, extra attack, it would almost be something that's useful, because the additional movement is nice, the advantage is nice. Like, this is the closest to being an actual useful t -t 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 technique. Uh, but the things... Uh, uh, that make it bad make it really really b -b 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 bad um, again you can't use extra t -t attack so you have to give up an attack to d -d -d do this um, you have to have a clear line of sight uh, in order to g -g get to s -s someone uh, d -d doing this with no obstacles in your p -p path so it'd be very very easy to uh, uh, kind of uh, hamstring a samurai by simply just not uh, be uh, allowing them to get to a straight line or with you um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm assuming this is probably the distance closer ability for the Sisa Samurai. Um, almost, uh, all tanks and most melee, um, 
uh, DPS have what's called a distance closer in Final Fantasy XIV. It's basically just an ability that lets you move forward quickly so that you can get into the action faster. Some of them uh, have you actually dash to an enemy. Uh, the Reaper, which I'm really, really enjoying, their distance closer actually just allows you to teleport 15 yams forward. And when you level it up, uh, after you do that, you can actually use another ability to teleport back to where you teleported from. So it's a, it's a really cool movement of ability that I love. Um, so I'm assuming that's what uh, Hisatsu Gyoten is, is mimicking. Uh, and in that sense, I guess, it, again, it's okay. Um, it's still not good. Uh, but compared to some of the other Sen abilities, this one, again, if it weren't for the fact that you have to sacrifice a bonus action to do this, this one might actually be useful. Moving forward to 6th level, you get Rascally, Rascally Vagrant. You picked up some tricks of a thief in your travels. You gain proficiency with two of the following skills or tool sets. Deception, Sleight of Hand, Stealth, or Thieves Tools. Again, all things that require your dexterity... Um, which is going to be your fourth best stat for this class. So again, this is, this is almost as pointless as evasion is because you're going to have a low dexterity score for this class. You just don't, you need to have a high strength. You need to have a high wisdom. It's best for you to have a high, um, it's best for you to have a high, um, uh, charisma to be able to take uh, uh, advantage of all the define or uh, all the things that show up uh, within the first two levels, uh, and then dexterity as well. Like this just doesn't work, and I don't understand why a Ronin um, would somehow now be familiar with thieves' tools. I guess deception might be useful because that's a charisma based thing, but. This is another thing that just felt like, well, we need to give them something. So, anyway. Going to 10th level, you get Hasatsu Yaten. As an action, you may spend one sun charge to deliver a parting blow to a creature. You make a melee weapon attack with advantage. After making your attack, you move straight backwards 10 feet without provoking an attack opportunity. This is another one. Like, this Ronin seems to be a movement-based class, which or subclass, which could be really cool if it didn't require you to spend sen to do it. Um... Because, uh, uh, again, Hasatsu Yaten, you have to give up your extra attack to do it. Um, and it only gives you 10 feet of movement directly backwards. So there are a lot of situations where that's just not going to be useful for, 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 for you. Um, again, I, I understand the thought process behind it, but the execution just isn't good. Um and uh, in general, it's it's almost always going to be in your best interest to extra attack or even, you know, dual wield it and completely ignore artful combat. And you can probably kill someone before uh, wasting uh, your bonus action using the, the this. Finally, at 14th level, you get Yukikaze. You learn to discern holes in your opponent's guard, allowing you to make more effective strikes. As a bonus action, you may spend one sin charge to add your wisdom modifier to weapon attack rolls until the start of your next turn. This is actually a useful ability. Um, however, this is another thing that requires a minimum of two turns to pull off because it takes a bonus action to get your first sin and then another bonus action to use it. So this is something that takes two turns just to make it easier for you to hit. Um, and by 14 level, again, you're not missing a ton. There will be some situations where that would be very, very, very useful. And adding to your attack roll is generally going to be... A flat number to your attack roll is always going to be more beneficial than a flat number to your to the damage roll. Always. So this is better, but it's still mostly pointless. And it still costs you effectively two actions just to make it so that another action has a better chance at hitting it's not guaranteeing a hit it's not improving your critical strike it's not making the hit, uh, the hit do anything better than you would normally just rolling an attack roll um so yeah just mm. so Final thoughts. Um, overall, <clears throat> again, 
Uh, it doesn't work in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the Aijatsu style uh, is completely pointless. Everything about it is bad. The Blade Master is almost usable, mostly because it barely relies on Sen at all. And the Ronin could be useful if it didn't rely on Sen. It's got an interesting idea. I have no idea why Ronin uh, turns into a movement-based subclass, but maybe it's the idea that Ronin were uh, expected to be constantly moving since they had no uh, they had no master to serve, so they were always on the move. Maybe that's what's inspired by it, but Overall, Ronin, I, I think, has the most promise to turn into something useful. Uh, the Blade Master uh, is the most useful simply because it doesn't use Sen. But on any other class, it'd be massively broken. Uh, because giving a third level character guaranteed reactions that are attacks uh, is just way too early uh, uh, in the game to give them that. It'll make all combat uh, at that point pointless. And by the time your GM would get used to you doing it... Uh, and would, you know, have upped the danger um, by like mid-tier 2 to, uh, to the tier 3, uh, then it's just not doing anywhere near as much. Uh, uh, it's not nearly as useful for you at that point. So, yeah. So, that is going to be all for me for the 5th edition D&D Cross Final Fantasy XIV Glasses and Races Compendium. Oh, dear God. Um, as always, uh, if you enjoyed this, please, I really, really could use this. Hit the like button. It takes less than a second and it means a ton. It actually means other people to see this shit. Um, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on in the comments down below. Um, I'm not going to ask you to, to comment on the samurai because it's broken. What I would like to hear since this is my last video on this topic for at least a little bit of a bit, what is is your favorite class or subclass from this entire book. Uh, there's, there's tons of them. Um, I would really be interested in, after doing this for, you know, at least six months, it might be seven or eight, to be honest. I can't remember. Um, after doing this for half a year, I would love to know which one of these you guys would be most excited to play. Let me know that in the kick of comments down below. Otherwise, again, that is all for me. We'll see you guys in the next time. All right. Bye-bye.